Welcome back to um, part two of um, crop rotations in Epsom Classic. Um, we left, uh, left off last time after having a builder simulation, um, put all the parts together and um, all that remains now to do of course is to run it. Of course experienced Epsom users know that every time Epsom, you run Epsom it, um, it never fails. Um, so let's cross our fingers and hope that um, something comes from this simulation. You'll notice that um, uh, once you start getting into multiple crops uh, in AppSim that things really slow down. So it's a function of the, the, the simulation time is a function of the number of components that are plugged into the system. Um, anyway, um, when it finishes, we'll look at some of the outputs just to check that what's been, that uh, things are okay. And um, I'll talk you through that in just a second. Okay, the first place you usually look is in the summary file to be sure that there hasn't been a, a fatal error that the simulation um, terminated properly. Um, so that's at the end. Yes, it got to the end without crashing. That's that's a good thing. Okay, um, if we, we don't need to look at all the detail of each individual crop, um, probably at this stage, one of the first things we'd look at is the harvest yields to see that all the crops showed up. We've got chickpea, we've got wheat, we've got sorghum. Etc. And you can see that um, they're all reporting at different times in different years. Um, that's what we'd expect. So that's that's a good thing. Um, but we find that the, the, these uh, these harvest reports are a little bit misleading because there's just so much inside them. Um, there's this phases component here that tries to show you, that you um, what phases of the rotation it's been going through at each time. And you can see that it's the um, the um, oh, state of the crop where it's leaving from and you can see the, which crops it's been going through at, as, as time progresses. Here's the sorghum crop that we added. There's also a, um, a rug plot graph here that's written in R. If you've got R on your system, it should be able to show you this, this plot here. It tries to show you the yields of individual crops here and it also tries to show the sequence of the rotation that's been going on as well too. It started out in a summer fallow and then planted a wheat crop and then it had another fallow and then a chickpea crop and etc etc until it got to the sorghum crop. So you can check, you check this rug plot for inordinately long time periods when nothing's happening. Um, you, that may or may not be by design. That'll be your fun to investigate. Anyway so, so that's the um, that's the, the basics of manipulating the, the, the directed graph that we had here. Um, next up, we've got a bit of an idea to um, uh, show you how to add some custom manager logic to the, the simulation. Um, we're going to build on the, um, the Lucent sample in the training toolbox, which is, um, I'm sure you've all got it nearby. Just take a wheat Lucent rotation, drag it up into simulation. We're going to add two components to it straight away. Um, we're going to add an irrigation component. goes in the paddock and we're going to add a, an empty manager component and a manager one as well this time round too and we'll pop that inside the manager folder. Okay the irrigation component we don't want it to do automatic irrigation we're going to do that ourselves so we turn off the automatic irrigation and everything else we can pretty much safely ignore. Um, in the manager folder we're going to we can call our empty manager something like um, the irrigation support Okay, um, and I've got some code here that I'll copy out of another window as well. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll set up um, a variable. This variable here called can irrigate is, is going to be the, um, the flag that the rotation manager asks every day to, to say, can I do some irrigation today? And we'll add the support logic to this. But at the moment, at the initialization, we just set it to zero. For the, at each start of the day, we're going to do some calculations to, to determine water content and see whether we can do an irrigation that day. This is pretty straightforward. It sums up the water content in layers one to three. It also gets the uh, LL and um, DOL. Uh, from layers one to three and puts those into a single single scalar variable and then it does this ASW calculation here which is that just the content minus the lower limit divided by the drained upper limit minus the lower limit and that should give us a number between zero and um, a little bit above one. Okay then we test 
this, so this is the start of each day. We test this ASW that we've just calculated to see if it's less than 0.6. And if it is, then we're going to set this flag to one and say, yes, we can irrigate today. Otherwise, nothing's going on. Okay. This one here, we'll turn this from the end of the day flag into another uh, uh, name. So we talked earlier about um, uh, uh, variables and events in, in AppSim. Um, what we're going to do here is change the name of the event that this bit of code responds to from end of day to something like, um, say, do irrigate. And um, this do irrigate event is going to get is going to get called when the manager wants us to do, put some water onto the soil. And it's very straightforward. There's two things to do. First of all is to send a message to the irrigation module to say apply some water, 30 millimetres. And then we reset that flag back to zero to say, no, we've done the irrigation today and we don't want to do any more. You've got to remember that the irrigation component works multiple times a day. It doesn't do just one pass through all the rules. It keeps on asking to see whether it can do any more, do any more changes. And if we forget to set this flag, reset the flag after we've irrigated, then it's going to find the, the same value that it found at the beginning of the day, which was one, and it's going to keep on applying water forever and the simulation will never terminate. Okay, so that's important to think about the logic that these, these um, um, events uh, must clean up after themselves. Okay, so let's, let's give this a go. That sh should be enough to, to go. Um, once again, it's um, not very fast, but we'll get there sooner or later. I find this time is good for making cups of tea. Look at this, this first steps. This, of course, this is all coming from the, this is in the um, PowerPoint. You can um, find this and follow it for yourselves. Ah, I forgot to do one important step. I forgot to actually add it to the chart. I'm sorry. We'll go back and do this quickly. Um, what we do here, we forgot to add this code that's calls the um, irrigation component. Uh, the rule we get is that we ask for the system, we sort of say, uh, can irrigate. And it helps we spell it right. And the action that we're going to send out to the system if we decide to irrigate is called um, do irrigate. Let's try that again. Another thing I've forgotten, by my apologies. Let's go sum of gation. on end of a from sewing to that as so this is going to get the irrigation that was applied each day it's going to sum it up between sewing to whenever we ask for it and it's going to the variable that we're going to be exporting will be called irrigation now We'll add that to the, um, the phases file. And we'll put that at the start where we can see it. Let's start it again. Check for other things we've forgotten. Well, let's hope we get what we see here. Probably enough to see, see some output and see that we're not doing something silly. Let's have a look at the summary file. And you can see that it, every now and again it will irrigate. 
at irregular intervals. Each year should be different as well too. There's more irrigation happening here. And again, more irrigation. Looks to be about two or three irrigations per crop. We can check that, of course, in, the, in this output file. So you can see come going up in 30 um, uh, millimeter increments. Uh, it's happening now, it's still in the loosened phase, but we've transitioned out of, we made a transition out of loosen back to loosen, and that's where the transition writes a line in the report. You can see that we're getting these numbers increasing. Okay. So, you can draw charts of that, you can, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you can add it to the outputs. Uh, we've seen repowering, we've seen phasing, phases, the phases file that we're looking at here. You can see the two columns here that were of our interest, of the date that it happens. That's the date that it makes the transition out of that phase and the state that it's going. Um, one other thing um, about this phased output file, it relies on this, this uh, com custom component here, which does a lot of accumulations over the um, fa uh, phase transitions. Um, it's, it's really useful for um, uh, summing over these irregular times. You'll find that it shows up in the variables and events column. If you poke through here and look at the paddock accumulator, you'll see a big list of, of variables that it'll, it'll give to you. Um, the amount of fertiliser applied since the last transition, the crop biomass as it leaves that transition. Okay, just remember if you've got an intercrop where there's more than one crop, what you're seeing here is the sum of all crops that were, were planted and not the individual crops. So you, you, if you're doing a crop analysis, you've got to use crop based uh, reporting. For this one here, we've only got one crop per phase, so that's not a problem for us. The length of the phase, nitrogen is at the start, water at the start and sums of drainage, transport and water balance, these sort of things. Okay, so that's a really useful uh, component that you'll find in the, in the standard rotation uh, simulations in AppSim. Um, okay, so pretty much that's all we've got to say about um, crop rotations. Um, um, please feel free to pop a, an issue on the issues page on, in GitHub if you've got a problem. And um, thanks very much for your attention. Cheers.